Good afternoon everybody, MG here, MG Covers, bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video is the results of my back test for my brand new PGA Tour Golf Model. Super, super pumped to bring in this video. It's going to help you a lot if you're looking to build a model and you're curious, how do I back test? How do I know if it's profitable? And give you a lot of great information uh, related to stat model. Stat model building. As always, if this is your first time watching my videos, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Super shout out to everybody that watched the last video. That was number one ranked video in the last, I think, 30 days for the time period that it was up. So super, super uh, appreciative of the support. Um, if you like this video when I finish, give it a like, share the video, greatly appreciate it. Um, if you're the, watching one of my videos for the first time and you subscribe to the channel, you get a ton of value. I have a ton of videos related to how to handicap NFL, how to handicap all sports. So just by subscribing, watching a, a lot of my videos, you get a ton of value. If you want to follow me on social media, MG Covers, Covers spelled with a Z, give out a ton of content on my Instagram story. And we also have something called Free Friday. So on Friday, I give away all my models for free. You get all my lines for all the sports that are going on during that time. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, same screen name, you get a ton of value. Let's dive into this video. It's probably going to be long, so just letting you know up front. I like to keep the videos under 15 minutes, so we'll still shoot for that. Anyway... Avid golfer myself, play golf practically every day, love to watch golf, so I not, know a lot about it. The reason I was always reluctant, hesitant to build a model, I didn't want to wager on something, um, didn't want to have money on the line for something that I enjoyed, but um, just kind of thinking about it, I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot, and again, stat model building is my forte, it's what I'm good at, um, so it's like Gary V teaches, hey, Rather than trying to fix things you're not good at, double down on what you're good at. So I kind of took that to heart and built this model. Now, um, I kind of put this together in the last three weeks, and what I'm going to show you is the back test. So maybe you're watching this video, you don't know anything about golf, and you say, well, this is going to be boring. It's not because you can learn a lot as I walk through this video. Now, first off, to understand a little bit about golf, just to show you this, in a typical um, – golf match there are approximately anywhere from 130 up to 150 golfers okay so that's a lot of golfers so what how this is set up if you look at golf odds the way they list them let's take a look at they're listed like this 14 to 1 16 to 1 all the way up to 30 to 1 so because if you think about it, if there's 150 golfers in a field, each golfer has a 1 and 150th chance of winning. Now, the difficulty, if you just pick one golfer to win, that's going to be extremely difficult. We've talked about this before, the, the statistical property. So if you pick one golfer, that's near impossible to do each tournament. Okay. Now, so realizing that it would be difficult to pick one. So you can't just pick one. And then but what you need to notice is, and so you understand this, when you see 14 to 1, that means if you wager $100 on John Rahm and he wins, you win $1,400. So what I came up with was this um, idea here. So I said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick 10 golfers. I'm going to create a mo model that gives me the 10, the stat model, trying to find the stat or stats combined to pick the 10 best golfers for that tournament. And what we would do is we would wager one-tenth unit on each golfer for a total of one unit. So what that means is let's just use $1,000 as a unit size because that's that will make it for an easy uh, explanation. Those of you that your unit size is 100, one-tenth unit will be $10. So we're going to use $1,000. So $1,000 broken down into 10 golfers, you would wager $100 on each of these golfers. So if any of these golfers won... For example, in this particular, uh, this was from the Dell match play, which we're going to get into in a second. If Dustin Johnson wins, you win $2,200. For Dustin now, you have to count these losses here, right? One, two, so it's a total of 10 golfers. If Dustin Johnson wins, you win $2,200 here, but then you would lose 100 for each of these golfers, right? So just to show you how that would play out, so then the total amount 
equals, I figured out, yeah, there it goes. Is it going to give it to me? Yeah. So you would net 1,300. Hopefully that makes sense. So Dustin Johnson won, and um, we still have to factor in these losses of, of $100 here, but because we're getting 22 to 1 odds, um, it can be profitable if any of these golfers. So the way I structured it, if any of these golfers win, um, you're going to win, okay? And obviously, if none of the golfers in your 10 uh, golfer field wins, you would you would be down a, a unit is basically what amounts to. Now, a couple of other things to show you too. Let's see, let's pull this up here. All right. If a golfer was listed at less than 12 to 1 odds, I did not include that in, in my selection, which means let's say if my model for the Masters had John Rahm, John Rahm would not be included in my uh, selection because it's only 1,000. So if he's getting 10 to 1 odds, well, guess what? If we win, we're only going to make $100. And that's not worth it because if you take 100 Whoops, let's see if we can do this. I'll show you this here. So we've net 100, right? And we had wagered a total of $1,000. Our ROI is 0.1 or 10%. So what I did was I set the criteria, and I did some testing. You could set it at 1,100. If you set it at 1,100, which means you're only going to play golfers that are 1,100 or greater, if that golfer won 1100 you would turn a 20% profit. The way I did it was I left it at, I made it 1200 And the reason being is, so that 1200 golfer, let's say he wins, so he went 1200 minus the 900 losses, right? So that would be a 300 divided by the total amount we wagered, which will be 1000 And our ROI would be 30%, which is really good. And those of you that... So what, why is ROI important? It means your profit margin. It, it, it's like um, a restaurant. You know, how much, what's your profit margin? My profit margin is 30%. If you have a very low profit margin, say 5%, 6%, 7%, it's almost not worth it. The minimum I like to see on an ROI or what you want to shoot for is about 15% return. Same deal in the stock market. If you can get a 15% return, that's good. And some people would say less than that is acceptable as well. But in this particular example, I shot for a 30% ROI, and you'll see that it, it works at that number. Okay, so now that you understand it, let's take a look at, and and because somebody might ask in the comments, I'm not going to show the stat or stats that I used, but I am going to explain how, kind of sort of how we came about with this. Um, all right. So the next sort of business, so the, the PGA Tour has what they call a wraparound season. If you don't like golf or don't know anything about it, it's it's a long season. It actually starts back in October, but what we're going to do, yeah, it starts, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's right, about October. But we're going to start, so the true season, the first of the year, which was January 5th. Now, like I, this is very important. I teach this, right? It's like with NFL, what makes NFL difficult to handicap week one, you don't have any stats, can't use the preseason stats. They, they don't use their starters. So you need to build up some stats. So for NFL, I'll wait until we have four weeks of data. I'll probably crunch the numbers after three. Um, for college football, I'll use three. So at this point, January 6th, there's no stats on golfers per se because this is the beginning of the year is when all your the golfers, the quote, good golfers start playing again. So what I did was I built up some stats. So I didn't play this week, this week, this week, this week. So we used the first five weeks, and that's what we developed our model on. And so the model uses the last five golf tournaments for that particular golfer. So what we did was, so the Phoenix Open was the first match we handicapped using stats from the previous. The reason is, very important, when you build models, the most recent stats are the best indication of future performance like in baseball right now what a team did back in april is totally irrelevant um as opposed to what they've done in the last 10 days dodgers have won what last 10 out of their last 11 they're hot it's a time when they were struggling right um so recent performance is the best indication indication of future performance so if you build a model you have to use 
recent stats. NHL, NBA, it's real good to use 10. The WNBA model I created uses the last five stats, okay? So what I'm going to do, we're not going to go through every single tournament, but I'm going to take one tournament just so you can see how this is uh, broken down. All right, so this is, let's take a look at... All right, so over here on the right, these are the odds for the WGC Dell Technologies Match Play event. Now, this over here, this these were the 10 golfers that my model said we could play. So remember, let's say if a tournament has 130 golfers or 150 golfers and we're playing 10, that increases our chances of cashing the winner because all these are odds to win. So we have to pick the winner, but it's much better than just playing, quote, one golfer especially when we're only risking one-tenth unit on each golfer, so one full unit for each tournament, okay? So if we look here, we can see here Dustin Johnson, potential payout. He was 22 to 1, so potential payout is 2,200 there, and these are our 10 golfers. Not going to go through all those. Now, in this particular match, Scotty Scheffler was the winner. He won here at 1,800, right? So, again, so if you take um, – so all these other golfers lost here. Let's add this up real quick just so you can see it. Now, I know some of this is basic, but I'm, I'm breaking this down just so everybody can. Whoops. Equals. All right, it's already going to do it for us. All right, so this particular match, we win almost a full unit. Right, so that's a good ROI. So we basically risked one thousand dollars and made nine hundred. That's an excellent, excellent, excellent return. Okay, um, and that's really how we did it. Okay, that simple. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the tournament, so you can see this. All right, so we wager on the Phoenix Open, Genesis Invitation, Honda Classic. Now. A match like this, a tournament like this, the Puerto Rico Open, we did not, I did not include that in, my, in the model. Why? Because it had a parallel tournament with all the, quote, better golfers. So we did include the Autumn Palmer. So if it was a tournament that had a very, very, very weak field like this one, um, the Corrales Punta Cana Championship, nobody, none of the, quote, good golfers play in that. It, it is what it is. Um, didn't include the Zurich Classic because that was different. It kind of skewed the model because that's a team event. Didn't include that one. Um, yeah, a diluted field, Mexico Open, or maybe I don't know if I did. I don't think I did that one because John Rahm was the only decent golfer there. I think it was a very limited field. Um, keep scrolling. Let's see. Didn't include the John Deere and didn't include the Barbasol. The Barbasol again was one of those tournaments that ran parallel with the Scottish Open. So. You can see down here, these were all the tournaments we had. Phoenix Open, uh, Genesis, Honda Classic, all the way up. Did all of the majors, and I think it was a total of 24 tournaments, including yesterday's tournament. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at the results. <clears throat> this thing was absolutely incredible, profitable, super pumped. So... Um, if you look at the winners, it picked uh, Scheffler. And, and I, want, I want to comment about Scotty Scheffler. Before this year, nobody knew who Scotty Scheffler was. So I'm going to ask you a question in real time here if you're watching this. If nobody knew who he was, is he going to be overvalued or undervalued? He's going to be very, very, very mm -hmm. undervalued. And he was in this golf tournament. Now, if you look at um, somebody like Roy McElroy, Rory McIlroy was extremely overvalued, and a lot of these, um, he would come up in my stat model, but I didn't include him because he would go off at like plus 900, didn't even meet the criteria. He was the, quote, heavy public favorite, right? So we didn't include him in a lot of those matches. So anyway, um, if we scroll down here, a couple highlights, a couple big ones, uh, Billy Horschel, that was a big one. In my particular model, I had him as the 10th ranked golfer, so he barely made the cut and paid off at plus 6,000 to win the Memorial. That was a huge payday there. Um, another big one was from the Wyndham Championship. You guys saw me tweet about that one. Uh, Kim won that one at 3,500. Again, in all these, what I'm showing in this model, we show the tournament, the winner, 
what the total payout was and of course the net because remember we have to subtract 900 from each of these right <clears throat> because the other nine golfers lost so we have to subtract that out um and then some of these other smaller ones like justin thomas um the pga championship it hit that one at 1200 so the net ended up being 300 still was a 30 percent return on our money um and then of course the losses are basically going to be down a unit so this thing was really good uh missed this weekend i thought um we had um scotty scheffler was he the one making a run i can't remember Maybe it wasn't Scheffler. I forgot who made a run late, but we had him and just didn't come to fruition. But Zalatoris won that. Zalatoris was not in my model, so that was a loss. So overall, it was 16-8. and Y'all, that is absolutely incredible. That's about, uh, what's that, 65%. Um, 16 and, and I counted as a win if we picked the correct one, right? So 16 divided by 24. Yeah, 66% uh, win ratio. And go ahead and we'll add this up and show you what the net was. This was really good. So we just, this is Google Sheets, by the way. And if you're not using Google Sheets, you're missing out. So net was 14,700 or 14.7 units. All right, so this thing was extremely profitable. Um, really good model, super excited about it. Um, now, a couple things to factor in like margin of error you have to do this when you're building models so this i only back tested one year right so you have to ask yourself well maybe one of the reasons it was profitable is because scheffler was extremely under undervalued and that may be true to some degree but i would say for the most part considering the accuracy of this he could have even lost maybe three three more times four times let's say he only wins one tournament and loses like four and we lose this this model would still been profitable and i mentioned this on instagram last night this thing if you got a model that hits about 10 units for a season that's a really good model you get three three different models or three different sports making 10 units a pop during a season that's 30 units a year that's extremely profitable for sports betting for sports handicapping so anyway that's the results of it super excited i will start wagering on uh golf next year the only problem with the upcoming tournament here um with the fedex now they reduce the field each week until they go to the final so it wouldn't be relevant um i mean it wouldn't be valid because it's a smaller field anyway hopefully this video helped if you want access to um power rankings for major league baseball we're going to do WNBA playoffs we have um college football nfl right around the corner you get access to that in addition to all my coaching videos, $49.95 per month. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the golf model yet. I've got some other new products that we're going to launch. Hopefully, I can get that launched. Three new products, so super pumped about that. If you want access to all my plays, that's $99 per month, and you get access to everything I just mentioned. The best way to do this thing is join for an entire year. It's like getting an associate's degree in sports betting. That's only $4.99 for an entire year. You save about $600 you get access to everything on the site including my plays hopefully you like this video and we will talk to you guys soon peace